So demystifying the laser is a really simple argument to make. It's just energy. When we put a balloon inside an artery and we take up balloons at high pressures, we're, impla we're imparting energy onto lesions or onto stents. The laser's doing no difference, and we're just using that energy to be able to optimize our stent results. So my experience with the laser is largely in stent under expansion. That's generally where I use it most, where I'm dealing with poorly prepared vessels that were previously stented and now have severe stent restenosis. So what we will do is, is high energy laser at the site of under expansion to really try to create calcium crack and calcium fissure and allow ourselves to totally expand the under expanded segment of stents. Another really good place to use laser is in severe clot burden and acute coronary syndromes where laser will effectively obliterate clot and does a great deal to mitigate the no reflow problems that we can see sometimes in our acute coronary syndromes that are affected by heavy thrombotic burden. Ultimately, the device is just like any other device, be it IVUS, a balloon, a stent, or a wire. It's understanding the basic principle of imparting energy onto vessels, understanding how to deliver it, and understanding that from a safety perspective, it's probably the easiest atherectomy plaque modification device out there. As far as learning how to use laser, I think it should start with a basic understanding of what the energy is that the laser imparts and how best to use it and when to use it. But other than that, it's just doing a few cases to understand how the catheter moves, understand how the laser actually warms up, is calibrated, and then energies are selected, i.e. how much energy is being imparted and how frequently each energy pulse is being used. Once you have a few cases under your belt, it's no big deal. Yeah, I think as, as an interventionalist that's running a case or running a room, the interventionalist has to think ahead so that the staff have the time to be able to prepare devices that perhaps they don't understand as well as other more routinely used devices with the time that they need to do so safely and effectively. So as far as staff goes, involving them in educational sessions on a regular basis both outside one's cath lab as well as within one's cath lab is important and then asking for the equipment with enough time so that staff who are not 100% comfortable with the device in the early days have the time to figure out precisely what they're doing, check the manuals, check the protocols that are posted on the device so that the setup is appropriate, is probably the easiest way from a staff perspective to be able to reduce the uncertainty, reduce the, uh, the uh, unwillingness to move on to a, uh, an advanced form of therapy and, uh, and to then increase its adoption and comfort.